uh, yeah, I, I think I said this earlier, but just to you know, reiterate the in the Russian Revolution, there were narco syndicalists who yeah, didn't participate in trade unions, even though that was their whole thing. It was like we're into trade unions. They all they they organized trade unions in America before they were deported to Russia. They brought their printing press with them to restart their anarcho syndicalist uh, trade union. And the Russian anarchist movement was the first movement to actually use the term anarcho syndicalism in the first place. Before they just called themselves, you know, anarchist trade unionists or uh, revolutionary syndicalists who were anarchists. But anarcho syndicalism, a specific phrase, was developed by the Russian anarchist movement, including crucially these people. And what they did is, yeah, they they focused just on participating in the workers' councils because they thought the trade unions weren't going to be a avenue for anarchist goals in the Russian Revolution because they were so interconnected with the Bolshevik Party. Because because I, I sometimes see kind of council communists online think that there's like nothing in common between or like council communism and anarchist syndicalism are totally different because council communists were like really against unions or the anarchist syndicalists weren't, and I think that's kind of ignoring that the anarcho syndicalists had the same critiques of bureaucratic hierarchical trade unions as the council communists did. A lot of them had the same concerns about tendency for trade unions to become, not become revolutionary. And, and a core part of the anarchists in the CNT formed a specific anarchist organization called the FAI, crucially in order to try and counteract reformist tendencies within the CNT and, and keep it being revolutionary and committed to armed insurrection and, and expropriation. And likewise with these Russian narco syndicalists, you know, based on their specific context, chose workers' councils over, over trade unions, which is similar to council communists in their context in Germany, saying we need to focus on kind of direct struggle independently of these huge trade unions connected with the parties and, you know, forming workers' councils as independent organs of, of workers' self-management. And a lot of the anarcho syndicalists in Germany had originally been a tendency within the, those trade unions, uh, and then they were kicked out and then had to form their own syndicalist trade union. And the uh, founding congress of the anarcho syndicalist international in 1922 was attended by, as far as I recall, some a few council communists who ended up not signing up to the, the, the Declaration of Principles, but they were there. Uh, and I also recall that there was a reading group in Germany, which was attended by both council communists and anarchists. So there were some conversations between those movements, although I, it's something I, I wish there was more about in English, because obviously a lot of it hasn't been translated uh, or is in archives, which I can't understand. But I, I do recall that there was some connections be between the council communists and the, the anarchists. 